so obviously we didn't have practice today, but if we um, had it, Rashawn would have been limited, and same with Aaron Jones, and then Jair, Zane, David, Devondre Campbell, Elton Jenkins, Zach Tom, Carrington Valentine, and Christian Watson would not participate. It was at, toward the end of the game, so we didn't ask you about it, but what's your concern level and how serious is it with Zach? Um, I think any time a guy isn't able to finish, it's, it's a concern. So um, he's doing better today, but we'll give him up till game time to try to get it under control, and we'll see where he's at. Do you know if this is the same ankle that Dre's been struggling with that happened yesterday? Uh, it's not. Um, Rashad came in and said that, that you gave them one hour to celebrate. Is that an accurate uh, depiction of your post-game uh, messaging? I, I think I may have said that. You can celebrate quickly, but it, it's already Wednesday in our world, so now we're sitting at Thursday, and um, you know that's the reality of just the schedule. So with a, with a young team, and, and I'm not saying necessarily these guys would be this way, but with a young team to win that way, you could kind of see them feeling really good about themselves and having a whole week to kind of feel good about what they had done. Is it good that it's a short week, that they don't have any time really to think about how they pulled off a hell of a comeback, or do you not think it matters? I, I, don't, know. I don't think about it. I think, you know, I guess I can only speak from my perspective. I know the challenge that we have in front of us. We've got a team that we've lost to three consecutive times that knocked us out of the playoffs last year that, um, it's an NFC North rival. So I know what they're all about. I mean, they're, it's a tough, gritty team. And we got to make sure that we prepare to the best of our ability to, to give ourselves a chance to go out and win. So what does a Sunday look like for you after a, with a Thursday game cut off? Were you here like extra late last night getting a jump on what's to come? Yeah, I mean, but the majority, I mean, all our coaches were in the office immediately following the game and you just, start grinding. Now you do, uh, some of the guys were able to get ahead a little bit towards the end of the week. Um, but I think any time you're calling plays for myself or for Joe, um, y you know, you don't want to, you're not going to get much of a look at it. Now, thankfully, it's, it's a familiar opponent and, um, you know, so there, there is, it makes it a little bit easier of a transition. You've done this a few times, Matt. What are the keys you think in, in the rest and recovery process on a short week? Well, it's, it's just that. It's making sure that these guys are, are uh, getting some recovery nonstop. they got to make sure that they get the proper nutrition, proper sleep, just doing everything in their power to get their body back. And, you know, you're also cramming in a lot of information in a short period of time. So they've got to be able to digest all that and, and still try to get their bodies back as best as possible. Weeks aren't new for you, obviously. You've had these short weeks before. Uh, do you have a template from a training prep standpoint that you pretty much stick to, or is this something that you, you constantly kind of tweak and, and adjust as, as you learn more about them? Yeah, we, we tweak ours a little bit from last year. Um, but, yeah, you, you usually find a, a rhythm that you kind of like a little bit. And, you know, it's just every team's a little bit different in terms of how you're built, and you just make the necessary – I guess, tweaks to the schedule. What did you learn last year that you, you tweaked for this week? Well, I think to, uh, we're, we're going to go for a little bit longer tomorrow than we, we did the, prior, the year before. I haven't seen the new facility. Do you guys have Murphy beds in your offices? Did you stay <laughs> here last night? or? No, did not. Was able to go home and then got up early and got back in. Now, Matt, you, how, how, how have the Detroit Lions changed since Dan Campbell took over? I just think you see a tough, gritty group. Uh, they, they're an effort-based team, and you can see it all over the tape. No matter what phase you put on, uh, they're going to give you everything they got. And they're a team that they're never out of the fight. You, gotta, you know you're going to battle a full 60 minutes. Well, I, think they actually, I think they've done a really nice job of um, developing some talent and also adding some talent to their roster. So it, it's, a, it's a very complete football team. Matt, what do you like about Wicks? Uh, there's a lot to like about Wicks. I think he competes. Um, his body movement, he, he's very good off of press releases. Um, you know, 
he, he can make contested catches. He can run through balls. He's, he's strong. Um, he loves the game. He, he's picked it up quickly. So there's a lot to like about him. What did you think of what the uh, corners who filled in for Jot did yesterday, specifically Valentine after he had to come in? Yeah, I think I think both of those guys came in and d did a nice job. They competed. And, um, you know, especially a guy like Corey Valentine that coming off the – the, the P squad late in the week, not knowing if you're going to get much action. You knew he, you knew, he knew he was going to contribute on teams, but to get 30 some odd snaps on defense, I thought he, I thought he did a really nice job. Did Carrington tear that bicep because it looked like he was not. Is there, other than wishing you had your whole group out there, is there a thing or two that you can pinpoint with your run game that just hasn't gotten going so far? I, I think it's hard to pinpoint just one or two things. I think there's a multitude of things. I think it's, you know, it always, we're going to start with what we're, what position we're putting these guys in in terms of our scheme. Uh, but I also think that we've got to make sure that when we have opportunities, whether it's a double team or whatnot, we get, we're playing with really good fundamentals, with great pad level and physicality. I think that's the basis for it. And then our runners, um, when given the opportunity, they got to they got to hit the right holes. So uh, I think there's a lot that goes into it. Um, I think you know you talk about the Saints defense; they do a good job against the run. When we knew it was going to be a challenge, and um, you know we didn't do a good enough job. You had four cracks from the two yesterday, and AJ was on the sideline for all, all four of those. That's a situation in the past. He, he might have been on the field. What were versus? game at right now and, and what's been the issue of getting him on track yeah I, I think a lot of that was a product pro, byproduct of we were kind of more in a, a two minute type mode and um it was whoever was out there so i don't i don't i wouldn't look too far into that um but you know personally i'd have a lot of confidence if he was the guy in there that we've seen him do it before so what Darnell gave you, you know, especially down the stretch yesterday, whether it was a kickoff coverage or you know making that last tackle on the defensive stand. Yeah, Sav Sav's been playing some good football, so and uh, I love his attitude. I love his mentality. He's really, I think he's matured a lot, not only as a player but as a person. Um, he was resilient. He was one of the guys that was in there the whole time, um, you know, believing and encouraging the other guys to continue to believe and. Um, I think that that's some great signs to see as far as a leadership role that he's taken. Two more, please. With the uh, Keyshawn play, what, what's the line between, you know, teams are going to know something's up when the nickel corner's on the field on offense, but <clears throat> what is the line between using that play because it was effective yesterday and then not using it too much where teams just know what's coming? That's a great question. Um, you know, I think it's... You know, it's week to week, right, in terms of what we're asking them to do. And that's a play that we've had up for a couple of weeks. We just haven't gotten gotten it dialed up. Uh, I, I've been – I don't want to give them another false promise. I feel like I, it was two weeks in a row I told them that, hey, we're going to get this called. And um, so finally got it done, and he went out there and, and made a good play. I mean, anytime you can get over 10 yards on a run, I think that's that's a, obviously a very efficient play and, and a productive play. So – um, he's a guy that anytime you get him the ball, he's got he's got the chance to take it the distance. So we'll see if we have to amp up his usage a little bit uh, on offense. It was pretty remarkable, I think, what he did yesterday in terms of played so, uh, how many ever snaps on defense. He played the one snap on offense, and then he fi played on five uh, phases of of special teams. There's not too many guys in the league that that do that. What was your thought process with Christian and Aaron going into yesterday's game, and how much better do you feel about their chances because you didn't play them yesterday and they have that time to get ready for Thursday? Yeah, I mean, we were hopeful for yesterday, but it just it didn't work out, and we'll see where we're at going into Thursday. I wouldn't say it's – I think we're in a similar spot, so we'll just see how they respond. and how they're feeling. Because the last thing we want to do is jeopardize these guys for a long period of time for, for one game. I mean, every game is extremely important, extremely meaningful, but we've got a lot of ball in front of us. And obviously, uh, you know, we got a great test in front of us and it would certainly help us if those two guys were available.